Welcome back to the Unprofessional Footballer Podcast. It's been a long time. I don't even want to look into how long it's been since I last released an episode. We're going to call it season two from now on, because I think that is a much better explanation for why we broke than me just being too lazy to record. So we're back, episode 14 of the Unprofessional Footballer podcast, and joined with me today, I've got two young men with quite an interesting story about how they have started their own football club in Malta and are now starting to do things a little bit different to how normal teams operate in Malta. So... Beside me, I've got Zimran. Zim, say hello. Hello, guys. I'm Zimran, and I am the current uh, owner and current uh, tactician of our FC. And then beside him, we've got Iman. Iman, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Oman. Uh, I'm the founder, founder of our Knights, and I'm a current player. So, uh, guys, let's bring it back to probably nearly two years ago now. Mm -hmm. That's when we kind of in first introduced to each other. I think me and you met slightly after that because yeah, you were a later arrival to the team. <laughs> but I remember I'd just taken over the role of the head coach of the youth nursery at Gargor and was set the task of creating the academy for the club. Now, what you guys don't know is... At the beginning of Gargor FC, the academy was struggling. Iman, I think you know just how bare bones everything was. There was maybe eight players in your age group at the time. There was, I think, the under-17s had eight players. The under-15s had maybe 10 or 11 that were taken from Nishar that we'd had on loan the year before. But the under-17s, it was a brand new team. So we'd taken a few players from the age group before the year and then we'd started to try and recruit some new players to to build the team to what it is today and Iman you were one of the original signings for Gargoyle yeah. how did you even get involved in the club I think you were one of my signings right did you contact me and, and we arranged it from there or were you already a part of the club my memory's a little bit grey now mine's kind of jagger too but if I uh, remember I'm pretty sure I, I got like suggested to go to Gargur for a trial by one of my friends. I think it was Mohammed. He had contacted uh, yeah, yeah, someone. Yeah. I forgot who he had contacted, but he managed to get us a trial. I think it might have been me, because I remember you two being one of the first kind of two or three players that I'd brought down to the club just to obviously help us make up some numbers. And uh, that's how me and you met. And then Zim, me and you, we would have met Probably, was it two, three months later? Yeah, yeah, a bit, it was a bit later as I had gone at halfway of the season from the club I was before to, of course, Gargur FC because I wanted more game time from the club I, I was at before because I had some issues with that, uh, with that club. They didn't want to play me and uh, I, had, I, had, I wanted to go to another club because I wasn't really happy at the, the club I was. And then I... I saw Gargur, I had some friends playing at Gargur at that time. I actually, I wasn't, I'm not going to say I wasn't interested, but I went more there. I went there because I knew I would get more game time as opposed to going to uh, one of the top clubs in Malta, one of the top nurseries. And I went there and uh, the rest is history, I guess. Because it was one of those, you were at Sirens before and was it you were playing, you were technically registered as a goalkeeper there, right? I Actually, I was registered as a fullback. I oh, was, that was it. You were a player there, but you came to us to yes. start playing in goal and yes. you became the backup goalkeeper, I believe, at the time. Who was the goalkeeper? Uh, Keelan was the goalkeeper. It's Keelan sure. and you, right? You yes. and Keelan were there together. And then after a while, I had become a first choice keeper after a while. So it was one of those where, again, Gargord kind of presented itself as that kind of last chance club. It was one of those clubs that were happy to recruit the players that weren't really being given a chance yes. at their teams. And it was set up to kind of give everyone an opportunity. So that's how we all met each other. Mm -hmm. um, Eman, you ended up departing the club about halfway through the season, right? What happened there? What was it? Something because I, I remember I was involved with the whole program, but I wasn't really too sure on what had happened with that situation. So basically, we, um, my mom and I, we were struggling with uh, rent and whatnot, and I couldn't pay the nursery fee, so I had to back out. Okay. So then after that happened, you were kind of left in a position where you couldn't really play football, could you? 
No, I really it, couldn't. It was uh, the problem with Malta, I find, for youth football is there isn't really a grassroots scheme. It's, it's all very much academy based football. Mm-hmm. And I, I do the ellipsis just because, let's face it, most of the academies here. They're not professional. Yes. They're not professional academies. It is grassroots football, but they monetize yeah. it too much and try to treat it like every single player that's joining the program is supposed to be a professional footballer yes. at the end of it, which, let's face it, in reality, there's a lot of players that are playing nursery football in Malta that just want to play for enjoyment mm-hmm. and just want an opportunity to play football and have fun with their friends. So you were stuck in that kind of in between stage where you're not a part of an academy and then there's not really anything else to do in terms of, of football so you ended up coming up with the idea of starting your own team right mm-hmm. yeah. so h- how did that uh, process come about was it something overnight that like that you just decided oh, okay fuck it i want to make a team or was it something that you'd kind of had in mind and wanted to do but never really had taken the steps to do it well, I've always had it in mind, I'd say. Uh, from the age of 13, I used to go play pickup with a few of my friends, and um, they used to bring it up a lot. They used to be like, uh, would you think that would be like cool to start our own team? Because uh, like, obviously, even they know the current situation with academies in Malta, how they mostly look for money. So we just decided oh, it would be actually cool if we started our own team. but. Obviously, being 13 years old, we couldn't really do that. So we had to wait a bit. We waited it out and yeah, we started our nights. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The one thing I I liked about our nights and I I remember when you first started reaching out and telling you that I liked the idea. I was happy that you guys had kind of tried to find an alternative to try and stay involved with football because that was... Again, an issue that I was trying to find a solution for with Gargor is once I knew the club would start growing, I knew there would be a lot of players coming in from other clubs and that would obviously then lead to us needing to move players on as well. And I didn't want to leave kids in a position where they didn't have anywhere to play football. So when I saw what you guys were trying to do, I know that you took a bit of inspiration from what we were doing with Gargor. I know that you guys had... Um, started using the was it the stack there's like a the app yeah, right yeah. the stack uh-huh. the stack team app which was a concept that I tried to introduce to Gargor uh, ended up not really sticking it was tough to get every single age group uh-huh. behind it how did you guys find the app did you guys do you still use it or is it something that you kind of started and and left aside well it's like um, our account is kind of collecting dust at the moment yes. but uh, I'd say it's pretty like user friendly. It's good. It's a really nice app, but it just it relies on everyone in the team being signed yeah, up yes. to it, and that proved a real, real ball ache trying to get, especially the under twenty ones. I remember trying to tell the under twenty ones to sign up, and some of them just looked at me like, "Bro, I'm not putting another app on my phone," and I'm just like, oh. "And once you know that there's three or four people missing from it, you can't communicate through the the app uh-huh. because you know people are going to miss important information." Uh-huh. So. Again, similar to you, I think that app is now with Gargor been collecting dust for well over a year. Yes. But it's a shame because that was a cool idea. Um, I'm glad that you guys were trying to implement things like that as well and, and get yourselves going. Uh, I saw there was a few things that I could see you were taking a bit of inspiration from the stuff that we were doing. And it was nice. It was good to see. Um, so tell me about the club's kind of early days. So you'd started off, I remember... You set up a friendly, the first game. How was it recruiting players before that game? I mean, we just sort of like brought um, some of our friends, you know. Um, How many players did you have at the the very, very, very beginning? I think about 14, if I'm not mistaken. About 14 players. All of them used to go to school with me and Zimran. Yeah. And, um, yeah, some of them don't even know how to kick a ball. We mm-hmm. just brought them for the fun of it. Of you course, know? of course. I mean, that's what grassroots football is. That's the heart of grassroots mm-hmm. football, isn't it? It's just playing football with your friends. It doesn't really matter how good you are, how bad you are. Just you come and enjoy yourself and learn. Mm-hmm. So uh, you had 14 of your friends. I know a few of them were also players from Gargoyle that had stopped playing. Mm-hmm. Was it, Who was the original goalkeeper that you came down with? The What was his name? 
Um, Evelyn. Yes, yes. Evelyn. Um, he, was he with you at the, the beginning? I mean, he, he was meant to show up to the game, but uh, something came up last second. Yeah. So I think, uh, if I remember correctly, I think I sent you a DM uh, telling you that we needed a goalkeeper. Yeah. And you guys came through with Zimran. Ah, okay. Uh, so almost we were the ones that put you... Ah, okay, that's yes, cool. I that forgot is, about that. I forgot about that. That is where my journey with Aura Knights actually started. Uh, I knew a man from school, obviously. I've known him for quite a while. I used to go middle school with him. And then I saw that Gargour and Aura Knights were doing a friendly. And at the time, Gargour got some new competition in. I started going into the new age group. And I wanted to show myself against Gargour. So then I told, uh, I told Coach Danny over here, I told him, would it be possible to play in the match? And then I also told them, man, I would like to play. And uh, yeah, I had, I had played keeper that match. It, as a goalkeeper, it wasn't a very good match for me, I have to admit. A lot of goals were conceded, a lot of silly mistakes, but that is what happens when you, when you see the core of the team, when the team has just started out, it's, those things happen. They exactly, happen. it was, I remember, because we wanted to set up a game for you guys, help you out, kind of allow you guys to see where your level was at, because Obviously, when you start a new team and you know you've got a big mix of players, the first thing you need to do is kind of figure out, OK, where do we like stand against a set of, of teams? So I'm trying to remember who was in that team that we fielded. Was it a mix of 17s and coaches? Yeah. Because I think I was playing. I think Coach Jamie played. Uh -huh. Did we have two or three friends from our team? I can't remember exactly who the lineup was, but there was a mix of kind of adult players, younger players. I think a few of the 15s were involved at some point. And it was, it was a good game. It was definitely, I think, a learning curve. I think you started to figure out that obviously some of the players that hadn't kicked a football before mm -hmm. might struggle to play against kind of the adult players. I think I know a few of the adults really took over the game at mm -hmm. times, but... Again, it was it was a fun game, and that was that was what we really wanted to get out of it was not to make it too competitive in terms of like oh we have to win this we have to it's more of just look let's have fun enjoy ourselves you guys can kind of get a feel for what it's like playing in a game together start mm -hmm. to see the partnerships that work obviously you have a few characters I think at that point that were a little bit toxic mm -hmm. the I know arguing broke out a lot throughout the game with the few mm -hmm. players. How did you guys kind of handle that? Because I know that's always the toughest thing when you're building a team is trying to keep everyone's mind on the long-term goal, knowing that you're going to take a few beatings at the beginning. You need to stay together uh -huh. as a team to build. Obviously, Gargoyle went through the same thing. The first season, I think both age groups, 17s and, and 15s, really struggled to find wins throughout the season. Uh, I think the 15s picked up maybe one or two wins at the end of mm -hmm. it. 17s, I don't think you did, did you? They didn't no, even pick up no. one win by the end of the season. So it's one of those where you know that the next year it's going to get better, but in the moment, how do we keep everyone happy mm -hmm. and keep them from obviously getting pissed off and leaving or just fighting with each other? So talk us through kind of that early stage. How did you kind of mentor that and, and manage the, the relationships on the pitch? Uh, actually, from, uh, from the first match they had against Gargur, it to me, for someone that hadn't played an, an eight-a-side an eight match with a team like theirs before, it, a team all made by basically teenagers just wanting to play football, and some of them wanting to take it seriously, others just went there for fun, and others went there to just waste waste some of their time actually um some some players yes they wanted to argue because they were taking it seriously myself i was taking it sort of seriously because I, of course i wanted to show gargul what it was but after i think around the sixth goal i conceded <laughs> uh, the final result of that match was uh, 
seven two. It was seven two, but we actually we conceded more goals. But Gargul decided to round it out to seven two to make the goal, to make the score sheet look better. Well, to be honest, it was more the fact that I don't think we had counted. I think uh, it got to a yeah. point where we weren't really counting and. I, Instead of just making up a number that was ridiculously high, it just made sense, okay, just call it seven. Because if we don't know what the actual score was, there's no point just guessing and saying, like, oh, 20 goals, because oh. if it's not 20, that's not fair on you guys. Mm -hmm. So we figured 7 2 was like a, a fair kind of result to give for the game. Mm -hmm. And you guys did well to score two goals. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's the one thing that a lot of teams struggle with when they first start out is scoring. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you managed to get two goals throughout the game. Uh, it was always the positives that you take mm -hmm. from it. Um, but yeah, I, I remember the attitude on some players. I thought, okay, this is where you guys are going to have that make or break. Mm -hmm. If you can control their attitudes and get everyone together, the team will do well and it will, it will work. But if you struggle to kind of keep some of those personalities at bay... Uh -huh. I think within a few games of if you're losing, these are the guys that are really going to make it difficult to carry on operating. I think the problem with that group in general was that some of them had some egos that they were good and they think we're the best. A lot of ego from some players yes. that just didn't really have any right to have uh -huh. ego, you know? They just thought that we are the best. Yes, we've made a team. We're new. We can compete with other teams, blah, blah, blah. And they were just, we're new. We're starting out and the team wasn't even banded together. They weren't, in my opinion, they weren't a team because the team sticks together with respect and they pull themselves out from the mud, from the mud whenever they need each other. And uh, I think that was the problem with that group of players in particular. It's just they weren't willing to stick themselves out. Not they weren't willing to stick themselves out of the mud, but it's just that, okay, we're losing. Now, okay, we conceded three goals, we've lost the game, that's it. We're not going to try anymore and we're just going to dribble for fun. That was, that was it. It's, it's that mentality to be able to carry on playing mm. as if it's zero zero even if it is three four five zero mm. because as soon as players give up it's just you're playing a man down mm -hmm. you're playing two man down then they stop passing they stop wanting to and it's just like and some of them were good they were good players mm. but again i think it's you could see that there was a reason they weren't probably wanted by academy teams mm -hmm. and malta was probably just the kind of toxic personality traits mm -hmm. that it's difficult to find space for players like that in a team because they do annoy everyone else, if that makes sense. But mm -hmm. I think you're at a point now, obviously, we'll get on to talking to uh, your current standings, your current mm -hmm. lineup compared to how it was, how many players are still there. But I think you guys are definitely on the upwards curve now. You've, you've gotten past that rocky stage. You're now in the, the growing phase, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, so we had, how many preseason friendlies did you have? You had three games before you joined the official league, right? Yeah. Uh, tell me the results. You played us and we had 7-2. You played, I think, Coach Jamie's work team, right? For the uh -huh. second game, the Glitnor group. Uh, and that ended 6-5. Yep. So again, positive result. Maybe not a win or a draw, but five goals, only conceding six. It's a tight game. How did that game go? Talk me through that game. So... Um the game was like um, pretty like it wasn't one sided at all it was yeah. like quite end to end I'd say um, it was the first time I believe our team actually worked as a team we tried working with some sort of tactics yeah. um, nobody was complaining about um, anyone losing the ball or anything we were distributing the ball well we weren't ball hogging we were motivating each other compared to whereas in the first game we were swearing at each other yeah. and whatnot. Um, yeah, we fixed our attitudes for the second game, but obviously in future games, um, everyone's ego kind of overshadowed mm -hmm. what we had agreed on. So with that team there, correct me if I'm wrong, but that would have been a team full of adults at that point, right? Glitnor group, Jamie's yep. team, because that would have been everyone that he was working with. I'm pretty sure the goalkeeper was uh, an under 15 though. Okay, so they had... That was kind of your first taste of playing a group of, let's say, men, because that was obviously the league that you were going to go into was going to be 
a full grown men's league. Mm -hmm. And this is where, again, you're getting exposure to a level of football that even players at under 17s and under 15s weren't getting. Mm -hmm. The best thing for a young player's development is playing against adults, understanding the level of experience difference, understanding how much more physical it is. So what were your first thoughts when you came up against, obviously, a team of, of full men? Well, uh, it's definitely more physically demanding, that's for sure. We were knocked off the ball a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, the tempo, I'd say, is much higher. Um, other than that, nothing much. Okay, so then you had one final friendly before that you went into the league. Um, tell me a little bit about that friendly. Uh, actually, we had a friendly against this team known as Slima Wolves. And in my opinion, they're the closest team to our level, actually, in the league. Um, uh, that game was very rough. Actually, we were meant to get a keeper. He trained with Gargoyle 17s as well. Now he left. Um, we were meant to get a keeper that game and two of the players playing that game. I remember me and uh, Mohamed Belhai, our current center back. Uh, we we shifted sort of keeper roles. So okay. he went keeper one half and I went keeper another half. And there was another individual who also went keeper, was playing with us at the time, but now he isn't playing anymore. Um, for the way we were playing, compared to the level we are at now, it wasn't on the same level, in my opinion. Um, uh, I remember Eman was playing really well, actually, him and Guilherme, his friend who is also currently in Aura Nights. And uh, we individually, we all played decently. But then as a team, when it came to us banding together and us communicating with each other, giving those passes, the, the mentality to us push forward and not always sit back and let the team play around us. I think that was what was lacking in that match, actually. So when you're setting up that match, obviously that's a team that would then go on to be in the league with you. At this time, had you already made the plan to join the Gargoyle Foul 8 aside league? Or was this more you played this team and then got the idea to then join the league? Um, I'd say more towards the second um, thing you stated. Um, yeah, so we were uh, originally going to go into uh, MAFA, yeah. the Maltese uh, Amateur um, League that's like 11 aside. Yeah. They play all their games in Marsa Schlock on weekends. Um, obviously, I don't think we would have had enough players to begin with. Because I remember the team reaching out to me. I think, was it you, Zim? And you were asking about what sort of league that you guys should join? What was it you, Iman? So I remember one of you. Yeah, it was me. I wanted a suggestion and you had suggested the FAL to me. And I thought it would be ideal for us since uh, I don't think we'd manage to get exactly. 11 players I know for sure. sometimes fielding 11 players with subs can, even for the teams that are in the leagues, a struggle. I'm playing currently with a, an amateur team in the Swan League and they struggle to field 12, 13 players each week because it's just very difficult to find everyone mm -hmm. free at the same time on the weekend. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of was looking at the different options that you guys could have and I thought the eight-a-side league might provide you like a, a less intense way of figuring things out, playing on a smaller field. Um, probably the competition would be a bit more equal for you just at the, the lower end of the table. Obviously, there are some very good teams in that league, but it would give you an introduction to kind of men's football playing on a weekly basis or it's bi-weekly, right? You play every two weeks games. Mm -hmm. So you're playing every two weeks on the weekend. And again, it just implements a little bit of structure that you guys can follow and, and be a part of a league before obviously stepping into proper 11-a-side football. Mm -hmm. So you made the decision to join uh, Gargoyle's 8-a-side league. What was the process for that? Because I know in some countries it can be quite difficult to join a league. You have to apply for licenses, insurance, things like that. In Malta, it's surprisingly quite easy, right? Mm -hmm. how, how, how did the process go? Which, it, it was pretty uh, straightforward. We, all we had to do really was register our players, um, obviously uh, using their full name, ID yeah. card. And all we needed to have was uh, like same colored shirts. Yeah. We didn't really need any kits or anything uh, in particular. Um, 
then we had to pay a fee, which we still haven't paid off yet, yeah. but we're slowly paying it off. Um, yeah, it was pretty straightforward. So you were given a payment plan by the club that operates the league to allow you to take part without obviously having to pay everything at once. Yeah. Mm. How much is the registration fee by any uh, 400 euro. Which obviously for a team of teenagers is quite expensive, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just something that you could pull out your back pocket yes. unless <laughs> one of you has very rich parents. But yeah, I think, again, that's a nice uh, gesture from the, the uh, team itself, Gargor, who mm -hmm. operate the league. Um, obviously, they could have turned around and said, no, you have to pay up front. But mm -hmm. the fact that they're willing to allow you guys to play in the league and, and have a payment plan to make it easier for you, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a very nice gesture. Um, uh, the league owner, actually, Mark, he's, uh, from my experience, he's a very good person and uh, he's willing to help out those teenagers that are, that are, I mean, that are maybe struggling a bit more financially, willing to give them some time to pay up. Uh, and he's a really good person in general, very humble. And uh, of course, from my experience, I'm not going to say the experiences of other people, because of course, some other people might disagree with me. But from my experiences, he's a very good person. And uh, once you get to know him, he's very, he's very good. I love Mark. I think he's one of the most genuine and honest people in, in Maltese football. I've, let's say, worked with a lot of chairmen before. And a lot of them have been very snaky, <laughs> horrible people. But Mark, I've got nothing but nice things to say to him. Like I've always said, Gargor is probably the only club in Malta that I would work with <laughs> just because... I know where I stand with Mark. Mm -hmm. When he says something, that's his word. Mm -hmm. He gives you his word. And again, like you said, he's willing to try and help people. Mm -hmm. and, and he's an honest man, which is hard to come by mm -hmm. in football. Right, so we were just talking about kits and sourcing kits for the team. So you said that you only need to have the same coloured shirt for the league. Yeah. So how many games into the league was it before you started to try and find a, a proper uniform for the team? Or are you still kind of implementing the fact that everyone just turns up in their own coloured shirt? Well, um, as of now, um, in present days, we're using uh, Gargour shirts for our matches. Uh, I think we've only been using Gargour shirts for our last four games, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, from uh, from around mid-season, I think from around January, maybe. Okay. So, again, the club, was that something that the club suggested and arranged for you? Or how did how did it come about that you started wearing the club shirts? Actually, um, uh, I remember after I took over the club, well, we should be getting to that soon. Uh, after I took over the club, I told everyone to come in blue shirts since that was uh, our color at the time. Now we are trying to shift colors. Yeah. And uh, Mark, he told me they wanted to give you kits from downstairs. And I told him it would help us out a lot since not e even all of us didn't come in the same shade of exactly. blue. So exactly. it would have been better for us. And then I went downstairs and everyone was happy. Yeah, we have kits, we have kits. <laughs> it is. It, it makes you feel like a team when the whole team is wearing the same shirt, right? Yes, yes. So again, I think we have to give massive props to Mark and mm -hmm. Gargor for, again, not only are they helping you join the league, allowing you mm -hmm. to pay on your own terms to make it easier for you to manage the sum, they're now also providing kits for you mm -hmm. and really giving a team of, of teenagers a chance to feel exactly in, like a team and mm -hmm. play like a team in, in unified colours. So, again, that's a really kind of humble and, and nice, wholesome story mm -hmm that you guys are now fully kitted out. Uh, I've seen you a few times in the green shirts. I remember at first I was looking, I was thinking, oh, wow, look at that team. They've got a nice kit. And I was like, oh, look, there are kits. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so you started the league. Um, how does the league work? It's two phases, right? You have the first group stage. Mm -hmm. Do you play, is it one round against everyone and then you play a second round against everyone? Or is it you play one round and then the teams are divided out from there? How does, how does the league work? Uh, actually, we the league, as in first, they do a league format. Yeah. So six teams, two groups. Yeah. Uh, each group has six teams. And actually, you... Oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> you... 
the teams basically play each other. They play, all of us play each other. In our case, it was one group for the first uh, phase of the team while uh, Aman still had the club. And then after I took over the club, I completely switched out the, the team because I, I, be I basically believed that the team's ego and how they were working out wasn't gonna do much good for the future because of the ego issue. So then I took over the, changed all the players and we played another round and got much better results from there. So you played the same teams in the second round as well? Yes. So then teams. after you've played that second round, how does the, do the groups then separate or how does, how does the league carry on from there or is the league finished? After that, we go into knockout format. The top three from each group go into knockouts to win one trophy and the bottom three from each group, we are in, we are in the bottom three. Yeah. They uh, play in their own kind yes. of separate knockout stage yes. as well. A okay. conciliation, which is nice on our end. because no, of course, it doesn't finish the season. It yes. allows you to play against more even teams yes. without obviously just going up against one of the main teams that have obviously been together for mm -hmm. years and years and years. So let's talk about the kind of first few games that you played. Obviously, I know some of the results you had. Um, your first game was a bit of a slaughter, right? It was out of all the teams you could have drawn, you drew yeah. the best team in the league, you drew the team that recently went to go and play against Francesco Totti's mm -hmm. team in Italy. And they're a serious team, let's put it that way, right? It's uh, Leg Legendary FC. Uh -huh. And what was the result? It was 19, 17. 17, uh, or 17. 18, 18, if I'm not mistaken. 18, zero. Now, 17, 17. it's a tough result, but realistically, when you weigh up, it's your first game as yeah. a team mm -hmm. and you're a bunch of academy kind of footballers playing against a well-established men's team that have been playing together for many, many years, have recently just played against one of the greatest Italian players of all time. It was, it was going to go that way. Uh -huh. But I think it was a good learning curve for you guys to understand that, OK, this is where the top of the level is kind of it only goes down from there, right? You're, the teams that you're going to play afterwards, they're not going to be as good as them. It allows you to start figuring out where your level is among kind of the other teams. I remember my first game in futsal at the start of this season. The first friendly we had was against the best team in the league. Oh. And again, for me, playing, I was way off the pace. I couldn't keep up, couldn't tackle them. Mm -hmm. Like I could feel how much better they were mm -hmm. than me. But it allowed me to understand, okay, that's, let's say, the top of where it is in Malta mm -hmm. for futsal. The games are only going to be easier from here. I start to find my level, it equals out, and I find which teams I'm okay to play against, and then which teams, okay, I'm probably not going to play this game because I'm not good enough to play against these players. But I think it's, it's a good learning curve for every team to play. You, that's why you see teams in pre-season, even in, let's say, like England, you have the lower league teams mm -hmm. choosing to play against Premier League teams mm -hmm. to take a 10, 15 nil loss mm -hmm. so the players can understand, okay, this is what it's going to be like mm -hmm. when we're getting fucked up, you know? Uh -huh. So you had the 18-0 against Leiden Daji. What were some of the other results that you had at the beginning? Obviously, the first round, you have five games, right? Were they difficult results? Mm -hmm. They were all high scoring, yeah. uh, not on our end, obviously. Okay. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we uh, on, in the first phase, we had only managed to score one goal. Okay, that's still a positive to game. take from it. Obviously, but, you're playing against yeah. established teams, teams that have been together for a while. To be able to score in a competitive environment, you take your wins. Uh, the goal was kind of um, lucky, if I'm being honest. No it was a deflection. It, it was a deflection of a defender. It was going nowhere close to the goal. Yeah. We kind of just shot it at their biggest defender and it went in. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you take them. A goal's a goal. No one, no one cares on paper <laughs> how, how it's scored. It's a goal, isn't it? So you finish the first round. Obviously, goal difference is looking a bit bleak. Mm -hmm. You've only got one goal for you, no points on the table. Where are your thoughts right now? Are you looking at the team thinking, ah, oh, fuck, we should probably stop this? Or are you thinking, okay, let's try and make changes and let's try and figure this out? 
um, I wanted to give up and disband the team completely, but Zimran kind of uh, spoke to me and reassured me that um, he he could take over and shift everything. Mm -hmm. And I chose to um, sell the club to him for okay. 50 cents. 50 cents? <laughs> yeah, 50 okay. cents. Um, I let him take over and he was kind enough to let me and Guy stay with the team. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Zim, you... Make a, a hefty purchase. You go in, take a bank <laughs> loan. You've uh, worked up an incredible amount of debt. Yes, fifty yes. cents loan from the bank <laughs> to buy a football club. Um, tell me, what made you buy the club in the first place? To be fair, uh, it's it's at this day I don't know. I don't know why I bought it. Everyone was like, why did you buy it? And for fifty cents, you, not even for free, I would take that club. But I don't regret it because now, because of our nights, I got to meet new people. I make new experiences. You make some bad ones and some good ones. And uh, you get to play as a team. You get more game time on your end and you get more experience in football. And for those also, I wanted to give an opportunity to some young players that maybe wanted to play against adults and they wanted to improve when it comes to strength because the, the academy game is way more different than the yeah. adult game, especially in eight aside, since the eight aside game in adult, adults wise in the FAL is built around strength. And uh, it's such a close compact yes, area yes. you really don't have time to fuck around on the it's ball. built around strength you have to in fact legendary the one thing i admire about them is how they pass and play with the ball i think they basically play they play tiki taka football even their coach he says we play a lot of five aside because we want to encourage passing mm -hmm. but from my end i don't want that because i don't like that type of football i like a lot of brexit ball <laughs> but um uh, it, it was tough. I really wanted the team. I wanted the team to progress and I couldn't just give up on the team when I had given everything that I, I had to give from before, you know? So I think the one thing that it allowed you as well was, I remember you'd hit a period at Gargoyle where you weren't really in favour. You were uh -huh. struggling with uh, the amount of goalkeepers on the team mm -hmm. at the time. You were in your head getting torn between whether you wanted to play outfield, whether mm -hmm. you wanted to play in goal. And there just wasn't really many opportunities. Mm -hmm. I think a few of the players that year had really struggled with their finding their place in the team after mm -hmm. the new recruitment wave came in. And I think a lot of players that were with us the first year that probably deserved a lot more game time mm -hmm. than they were given started to find themselves on the outside. Mm -hmm. And again, it just presented you an opportunity to stay involved in football, keep playing, um, and go a different route really yes. like you said you're playing against grown men you're, you're getting a much better experience mm -hmm. than players that are playing in section D in under 17s uh -huh. league so I think props to you for taking on the challenge taking mm -hmm. on the task obviously the team has recorded its first win mm -hmm. so massive kind of achievement milestone mm -hmm. for the club um, obviously it's been on the brink of shutting down to now mm -hmm. winning games and the recruitment has obviously shot up a little bit. You've got some exciting players mm -hmm. playing for the team. You've got uh, a few adults that have made appearances mm -hmm. here and there. Uh, so tell me, what, what was your first move? You said that you got rid of a lot of the team and brought in your own uh -huh. players. So tell me about that process. Uh, I From day one, I knew that the egos of the players, they would affect the team massively and uh, how we'd play. And in fact, Eman, Eman knows about the situation we had when it comes to personalities. So I wanted to, instead of telling them to calm down like I had tried to before and trying to get the team to go on, uh, on a training session and instead of doing training, they just kick around with a ball. I wanted to I wanted to make a solid team that would respect each other and that would play around and I just wanted that respect that was my idea at the core of the team respect that was what I had in mind when I started out the team in reality so how many players were actually on the team when you took over uh, when I before I kicked so before you'd removed before. everyone how many players did you have to kind of look at oh there were there were, we had the whole I think like 15 or 16 players yeah man uh, uh, we had 22 it's just only 16 would show up yeah. so you've got a list of let's say 22 players 
what did you do? Print out a list and just say like yes or no in your head, or was it more just a fuck it? I'm getting rid of everyone. You can stay, you can stay, but everyone else out, and I'm going to pick my own players. Actually, um, uh, Mark, he had a list of players because usually they have a list and you fill out kit numbers and before yeah. the match. And uh, he gave me the paper and he was like, take everyone you want out and keep everyone you want in. And then I was like, if this team is going to work, I talked to one of my friends, he's in Aura Nights now, Liam. He, uh, we were on Tallinn, coming back from training on the public uh, transport and uh, we actually told them I, I think I might keep some players it was like kick everyone and keep the ones that you think will actually respect the core values of the team which yeah. at the core we have youth and respect that is what we have mm -hmm. at the core of our team good values to have yes and uh, I was like should I make the team I try to get as many adults as possible but then I looked at what Eman tried to start with his friends and I was like, no, they tried to start with youths. They wanted to make they wanted to make us basically the youth ATSI team of Malta. Yeah. So I decided to keep that at value and I went to some under 17s players and I kept other ex Aura Knights players, including Eman, Guilherme, Mohammed, Mirko, our current top scorer. So yeah, I decided to keep them and they've worked out. They've worked out in a good way. <laughs> I remember Gil was a good player, even in the first game we played mm -hmm. where it was our team against your team. You could tell individually he was a good player. He just needed some players mm -hmm. around him that he could play with. Um, did Mirko play that game? No, Mir Mirko was not in Malta, I believe, okay. around that time. So how did, is Mirko one of your friends? Is that how he joined yeah. the team? Mm -hmm. Uh, does he have a, a background in, in football in Malta? Or uh, just he used kind to of... play in Italy. He's okay. played for Sirens as well. Yeah. He, um, he, he has a trial for Hamroon, I believe. Now he has a trial for Hamroon under seven... No, minors now. He has a trial for Hamroon minors, and yeah, that's it. And Mo, obviously, uh, played with Gargore under 17s. Big, strong centre-back. I had the pleasure of being absolutely <laughs> wiped out by him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think he fits very much your play yes, style yes. of Brexit tackles. I mean, uh, from my end, what I like most about Mohammed, a lot of people criticize him for not being the most um, uh, ball playing center back. But me, that is actually what I like about him. I saw that he, he just gives tackles and he cuts people off their feet. Mm -hmm. So that is what I like myself. I do it myself and I have the opportunity to so it reminds me a lot of myself in a way and I decided to keep him and he was actually I think that is one of the best decisions I made to keep Mohammed in the team Big Mo is how I, I like to refer to him uh, big boy for under 17 uh, so you've pillaged the team you've gotten rid of 18 out of 22 players what's your first step on recruiting obviously you're still registered to Gargor 17s uh -huh. at this time is it just a case of going into training and talking to people and saying who wants to play or did you have certain players in mind that you wanted to actually bring onto the team? Actually, when I, I remember when I, I had the idea of taking over the club, I called them on because actually that day we were meant to have our first match. Uh, back from the first phase against Legendary. And then he was like, Zim, I think I'm going to cut the team. I don't think I want to be a part of this anymore. I just don't think it's going to work out. Money-wise, you're not doing well. Uh, Team-wise, our egos are getting in the way. I just think this won't work. And at the time, we had just come out of a 16-0 loss against the second best team in our group, Zebbich. They had uh, ex-Malta players playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, at that time I was there at Gargur, I cut, I was like, I'm taking over the team, Mark, I'm taking over the team. And then in training, I told everyone, I took over Aura Knights, whoever wants to play, tell me. And if I see you're a good fit and that you can, I think you're physically strong enough to play against adults, or you have the technical ability to play against adults, I will put you in the team and I will give you the chance to play. And what was the response from the players? Did you have a lot of people wanting to play or was it just a few and you had to try and convince others? I mean, actually, I think it was four or five that played. Yeah, I, uh, 
I told uh, our current right midfielder, uh, Max Hills. I told Vespa, our uh, center mid. And there was some other figures. There was someone who came down from Gargur Miners as well, under 21s, telling me he wants to play. And I played him at the first match against Hoplites, but then after he just didn't come and uh, you now he's not registered. So. Is that and, Isaiah? Yeah, Isaiah, Isaiah. Okay. So you've got, so far you had Vespa, Mm -hmm. Obviously, good centre midfielder. I'm happy when I saw him playing. Good fit for mm -hmm. the team. Max Hills, again, another player that really fits the team. Mm -hmm. Good player. Mm -hmm. Knows how to work up and down the pitch. There was Miguel Abela as well. Miguel Abela, that's good to hear. I think he really would benefit from playing against some adults uh -huh. and understanding kind of how much more physical the game can get. Mm -hmm. Was there anyone else that so far from Gargor has played for you guys? Uh, there was Isaiah. I think there was a f another former Gargor player who's now not part of the team anymore. He was a goalkeeper, but after last match, he told me he's going to come the night before. Apparently, from what I heard, he got a bit wasted. So I thought that he wouldn't be part of the team anymore. And now I kicked him out and used to play with Gargur. Uh, and which player was that? Is that I don't want to mention names. Don't want to mention names? He uh, okay. was a goalkeeper. He used to play with Gargur, but then left after a while. Um, actually, I think that was it, to be fair. And then, then I told another player that used to play with Aura Knights as well, Jake. I told him, come down, play with us. Jake is the one that trains at Gargur, yes. right? He's Leah. Leah oh, right now, he's technically registered to Baltzan. He's on loan with Leah. Really good kid, great mm -hmm. player, great attitude, just loves playing the game. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I like about him. You see him always around. I know that he'd filled in for a few teams before, just used to sit and train on the mm -hmm. back pitch. And if a team ever needed a player, he was always the first mm -hmm. to raise his hand and try and play. So again, when I saw him in one of the shirts playing for you lot, again, I thought, okay, that's good mm -hmm. signing, great signing for you to have. Um, so you've got a team full of players now. How many players are currently registered with you now? I think we have around, we, we have players, uh, we have a lot of players registered actually. I think we have around 18 or 17. Some of them don't come to matches anymore. For yeah. example, one of them, he's gone abroad now. And uh, yeah. <sighs> I have a lot of players registered and we have a lot more interested in joining the team. Uh, believe me, I understand the, the difficulties of matchmaking, even with the five-a-side series I'm running oh. at the moment. You have a list, I think I've got a list of 35 players. <laughs> the stress of trying to put together 10 people for the first two or three games is so annoying. You always have people dropping out last second. True, true. You are just sitting there. I remember the first two games at least, just every contact in my phone that I knew was a goalkeeper, just begging them, like, <laughs> boys, I need someone, just anyone, please just show up. Someone come and save the game for me. Otherwise, I've got to cancel it. And I know mm -hmm. if you start cancelling games... Then people are not going to turn up. You lose the people that were interested because mm -hmm. then they just think, oh, fuck this, this isn't serious. And then, obviously, you just lose all the momentum that you've built up. So mm -hmm. the consistency really is the important part mm -hmm. of just fielding a team, no matter how strong it is, how good it is, just get the team out there. Mm -hmm. And once you've played a few games, then it becomes a lot easier because mm -hmm. everyone from the outside starts to see, okay, they're serious. You know, mm -hmm. I think that was definitely your biggest challenge that you were going to face was obviously... One, as you start the team, it's just an idea. Mm -hmm. You have to prove that you're actually going to follow through the mm -hmm. ideas, set up games, join a league and prove to people that this is a serious project, not just creating an Instagram account and pretending you're a football team. So uh -huh. the fact that people saw that you were playing games, posting results, you joined a league, it was all things that allow people to think, okay, yeah, I'll give this team a try. Like, mm -hmm. They're actually serious. And then obviously once the results start coming, you have the other difficult uh -huh. part of trying to recruit players that don't mind playing for a team that's going to lose 10, 15, uh -huh. 0 for a few games, hoping to try and obviously change the fortune around. But you've done well to your credit because as of how long ago was it was the game against Slema Wolves? It obviously, was... we've got one positive result to talk about last week. Yeah, last Saturday, actually. Um, uh, we won 4-0. It was a very good match from our part. They played a good match as well, but of course we ended up throwing out with the win. Our defense was terrific. Uh, we played absolutely excellent at the back. They barely got one shot through, barely. And uh, that was very good from our part. In the midfield, we did very well. Emmanuel was playing in the midfield. 
And uh, even at the front, we had a lot more shots on goal than them. Uh, Mirko scored a goal, Yas uh, Yasin scored a goal, and uh, the signing, actually, on his debut, he scored uh, two, uh, two goals, Ismail. Ismail, yes, he scored a brace on his debut. And I was very happy with that. Uh, I believe the win sort of represents the, the direction the team was taking, you know, because as for before the old group, they were trying to sort out game time, you know. Now, it, I feel like we are taking it more seriously and the results have shown it. We haven't lost a game by more than six goals since the first phase, since Zebir. And that was, I think, before January. Was it before January? Yeah. It was before January and uh, our worst result up to now was 6-1 against Zebir. And the last time we played against them, we lost 16-0. Which I believe is a very, very so good a massive improvement. Massive turnaround, massive turnaround. <laughs> I mean, we're going to pause there quickly. I'll of reset course. the cameras and then we'll go again. So you've hit your milestone. You've got your first win as a football club here in Malta. Um, first of all, talk me through the lineup. How many players did you have attend that game? I think we had uh, actually. I think we had around uh, eleven people. At the, how ma how many people were on the bench? I'm on thirteen. Thirteen. Three people. No. Mm. How yeah. many people were on the bench? Three? No, more than three. I think we had four. Yeah, around four yeah. five. So 12 players in total? Yeah, 12. Talk 12. me through the lineup. Tell me some of the boys that were playing. Tell me a little bit about them. Obviously, this is your chance to give everyone a bit of shine. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, goalkeeper. I wasn't meant to go in goal. I was actually meant to coach. But the goalkeeper that was meant to show up Don't didn't show it. up. So it got got a bit wasted. <laughs> <laughs> he he was meant to show up, but he didn't, and I had to go on goal. That game we played uh, a formation with two centre backs, and uh, before you mention the centre backs, yeah. clean sheet. Yeah, clean sheet, clean sheet. Well done, good decision to go and go. <laughs> it's not like I had much to do with the centre backs, <laughs> but <laughs> it was good. Uh, centre backs, I had uh, Mohamed Belhais, we've already mentioned him. Big Mo, Big Brexit, Mo. Brexit Mo. Brexit FC. <laughs> and I also had another uh, man named Dylan. He is good, somewhat tall. I see him as more of an interceptor type player, but on his day, he's, he's actually very good. And uh, in midfield, starting on the left, I believe we had Yassin. He currently plays for Sirens, Miners. Which Miners he plays for? Yeah, but he's kind of like... Um, he's not playing for he's Sirens not, anymore. He's not playing much? No. Okay. Uh, he's going on trials with uh, Pembroke, I'm pretty sure. Nice. Uh, yeah, he's he's a very good player. He has, in my opinion, he has no weak foot. He can take the ball up with ease. And he's a good dribbler, calm on the ball. What you expect from uh, left mid, he's basically like Perisic, from my view. Okay. And center mid, starting, I had Emmanuel. I have played him center mid before. I've seen him play 11 aside as well. He is a very good player technically. I Actually, I believe a lot in him. I have a lot of faith in him. I think he can do some magic in the middle. Do you know what, though? With Iman, I was, I was surprised because I've seen you play. I think you're good. I think you're a very good player. I don't think you got nearly enough playtime when you were with the 17s. Because I remember when you were there, I used to see you getting sat on the bench at times. I'd be looking at some of the players that were playing and I'm thinking... I've seen you kick a ball around. Like before training, you were always one of the first players there kicking the ball around with some of the boys before we started. And I've seen videos of you play. You're good. Like I was, I was a bit shocked that you weren't playing with Gargore that much. And uh, yeah, it surprised me. I just, I don't feel like you were given much respect in that regard when you were a, a player at Gargore. So it's nice to see that you're, you're coming around, you're getting game time, you're, you're showing obviously what you've got. Cause yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Uh, right mid now I have uh, a guy that plays with Gargur he's a Brit Max Hills he's very good very aggressive which I like a lot with my players and uh, I believe he can do some magic as well sometimes he's good in headers 
when it comes on the ball, yes, he's not the most special, he's not the most technically gifted, but you can see it in his passion and the way he plays. He's very, he's a very passionate player. He doesn't like to lose the ball. Workhorse as well, up he's, and down. We'll yes. get up and down the pitch, no problem. A lot of stamina. He doesn't stop. And then the two strikers, I had Mirko, our current top scorer. And uh, on the left side, I had Max as well. Max, oh, not Max. I had Jake Boych, actually. Yep. I had Jake. And who were the subs? Subs. I had Max. Unfortunately, I wanted to start him, but I couldn't because of his arm injury. But now he, he should be coming back after a while. He he played actually a half with us that match. Is that Maxi Kirkbride? Yeah, Max Kirkbride. And, uh, he's a good player. He's a very good he's player. He's a good player. I had him play the first episode of the uh -huh. fives as well. But again, like you said, broke his wrist. The, the very next week, uh -huh. so he has had to sit out the next seven episodes, but I think I'm going to try and get him mm -hmm. back involved before the season ends. For those that watch uh, Coach Danny's uh, coaching, he does private coaching. Uh, Max actually, actually starred in, uh, not starred, but he's done a lot of private coaching with Coach Danny, and you can tell by how he works that he's a, he's a very... His attitude very very good very very yes. like willing to learn just wants to be better he um, loves football he will get far in football if he keeps his attitude that mm -hmm. way he's got a very good technical base and just needs to get sharp again yes um, uh, another bench player was my friend Liam uh, he's been he's not been playing football much compared to some uh, compared to the people in the team he's only been playing for the past two or three seasons but he's another one of those players that he's a workhorse. Do and I know Liam? Of course, Liam Tabuane. Yeah. I was trying to figure out which Liam that was. <laughs> there's been a few Liams at Gargoyle. <laughs> but he's, he's good. His attitude is perfect. And uh, I believe he's another one of those that if he puts his mind there, he can get very far in football and in life in general. And uh, on the ball, he's, he's a passer. He, can, he knows how to get out of pressure easily. And uh, yes, he's, he's very good. Uh, another bench player is uh, Ishmael. He's the, he currently plays for Foriana. He's, uh, he's actually a good player. He impressed me. I, uh, genuinely, from what I've heard, I didn't think he was going to be that, that special, but he was very special. Uh, drib was dribbling around their midfielders effortlessly, scored two goals, two brilliant goals actually, and I believe he's very talented, very talented. And uh, who's the other bench player we had? I have no clue. Liam? Diaz. Diaz. <laughs> 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 Whiskey. Diaz. Uh, actually, he, he doesn't even play football. He's a water polo player. He's Is that the one that's friends with, with Vespa Max. and Max? Yes, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. a very good friend with Vespa and Max. Is his last name Galia? Yes, yeah, yeah. Diaz Galia. Uh, actually, he doesn't even play football. He plays water polo. But he decided he wanted to come and have some fun with, Gar uh, with our knights. And... Uh, yeah, he, he's coming to matches consistently, giving, we use him to give players breaks. Of uh -huh. course, he knows himself. He's not as gifted as the other players that play football. Cause it's all important of us. though to have those players in the yes. team. Those players that know their part, they know maybe they're not the starter, yes. but they're there to just cover and uh -huh. are happy to play their part and learn. And it's, it's good to have people yes. like that on the team. He's there, I mean, whenever we needed him to go in, maybe someone was injured or a player was tired, he always went in. Yeah. And when he went out, he didn't complain. Exactly. Reliable, that, they show up, yes. they're there when you need them to be. Yes, that is what is most important from the players we have on the bench. Heart and soul of, of the team. Every mm -hmm. team needs players that will happily do their part, mm -hmm. even if they are smaller part players. But OK, so you've got your, your winning team there. Um, What's the next game? Tell me about the next game coming up. This is now the knockout phase, right? Yeah, knockout phase. So that was the first round of the knockout? Uh, or was that the final league match I... of the second round? No, I think no knockout. Slimmer Wolves knockout. So you've now knocked Slimmer Wolves out of the cup? I don't think they're knocked. I think they have. They still have some matches left because I think we're in group stage. Okay, okay. so it's another group stage. Yes, it's, okay. it's a group stage. But uh, I think next game we have is going to be against Shrieky Windmills on the 7th of April. 
last time we played against them was phase two. We had Coach Jamie playing. Now, unfortunately, he's, gone, he's not going to play with us anymore for some uh, personal reasons. He's doing his operation. Yes, right. he's doing his operation he, for his knee. And uh, yeah, we we played, not we played, we, we lost 2-1 against Shwiki. Okay. They're a very good team, very strong. Tactically, they're a very based team. They, they're based around their tactics, you know. They're a very structurally good team. Yeah. And uh, you, you have to pass around them to be well. But we only lost 2-1 and we conceded two long shots because unfortunately the, from the side they scored, there wasn't a player there and the player was just left free and he wasn't marked. So yeah. he took two shots, they went in, good, powerful shot stop corner. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it basically. So time for revenge. Time for revenge. Yeah. Maybe we can actually win this time. <laughs> well, if you win, you're looking like you're in a good position to progress, yes. right? Because that'd be six points in the group stage. Yes. I can't imagine many of the other teams mm -hmm. getting six points. So how many teams are in each group? Is it three and three or is it six? I think six. six. So you're I all in six. one group? Yes. Okay. And uh, for us, really, it's not, about, it's not about winning the match exactly, but it's more about showing what, showing what we are, basically. Exactly. For example, last match from one of, actually, Emmanuel heard it. He's next to me. <laughs> Uh, he actually, he told me that they were at halftime, their coach was saying, you should be ashamed. You, you shouldn't be losing to a bunch of youngsters, but I want everyone to see that we're not just a bunch of youngsters. We are people that are willing to do everything in their power to bring glory to our nights. Well, it's one of those things. There's always that well-known saying, if, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Uh -huh. And obviously I know a lot of young players get that judgment of oh you're just young you're mm -hmm. not experienced enough or you're not mm -hmm. strong enough you're not big enough you need to grow you need to get older but I, i've never been a believer in that i've always been a believer that if you are good enough then it doesn't really matter what age you are so i think it's good that you guys are proving the critics wrong mm -hmm. you're always going to have people that will question your age and tell you oh you need one experienced older player mm -hmm. in the team or two or three to mm -hmm. hold all of the young ones together but i like it i like the fact that you're mm -hmm. doing your own thing you're working with a very young group and uh just trusting each other really to to do the job and it's showing now you're starting to get the results mm -hmm. and i'm sure it's only going to keep getting up and mm -hmm. up and up i mean our nights was created to break the rules when it comes to adult football because i'm on he created the football with his he created football club with his friends because they wanted to show everyone that youths aren't people not to be messed not to be messed with but underestimated a, exactly Don't we, are, we aren't meant to be underestimated just because we aren't as grown as you are you know we yes you might have strength but then we have speed and agility exactly. around there's, there's other ways that you can play around it counter the the differences yes. and balance out the game for example uh Mirko, uh, he's not the tallest of people, especially even compared to our age. But he's still top scorer for us. For now, while wearing the number seven, he scored in every match. Yeah. Yes, and uh, I think he has around five or six goals to his name now. Good. Good start. So you're going to play the rest of the knockout stages, hopefully progress through to the next stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the plan? Let's start talking a little bit about next season mm -hmm. like where does it go from here i mean for us what me and emmanuel have planned because me yes i am the current owner but i don't just make decisions myself because as the owner uh, a club is nothing without the team playing and i believe that emmanuel he shows the core the core of the team, how, because he created the team and I believe that for me to make a good decision, I have to talk to him first because without me knowing the values of the team and what the team needs, I'm not going to get far. And uh, for next season, what we have, we have very big things planned. We would like to get a sponsor, which of course for us is very difficult since we're young and some people might not trust us as much. And uh, we'd also like to market the club a lot more, open the club 
and also show that we are doing something different, something out. We just basically came out of nowhere and now we're out here trying to make a point. That is the main thing about Aura Nights and even while it was created. Maybe Aman would like to say something about it. Yeah, um, the whole goal um, with this whole program and why I started the club was because uh, obviously I wanted youths to prove that um, they shouldn't be underestimated by uh, older people and all because I just wanted to have a bit of fun with my friends. Um, you know, Malta is a small country. Uh, here it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah, so massively. It's, uh, it was hard. Even to find an actual club, it's really hard. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully, uh, I joined Santa Lucia. Um, Mohamed Belhai has as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's all about who you know. I'd How say. have you found juggling playing for, obviously, an academy team and then also trying to manage the football club at the same time? Obviously, Zim, you're mm -hmm. in a similar position as well. Mm -hmm. You're still technically registered with Gargoyle, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you played with Santa Venera the other day? Uh, actually, yeah, yesterday I had a minors match with Santa Venera against Gargur because I am trying to leave Gargur because of game time. I would like more game time under my belt. And I think I don't fit the direction the, the coach, current coach of the 17s wants to take the team. I... Uh, Personally, I am a, since I am a big believer of Brexit ball, I like to slide tackle and take people out, whereas Coach Jamie likes very technical players, players that can pass out the back. Uh, so I decided I would like to go try out with Santa Venera because I think I'd get more game time with them. Um, for me, I don't think it would be as big of an issue as with Emmanuel, since I play with Gargur and basically Gargur owned the entire league. So mm -hmm. for me, it wouldn't be that big of an issue. And there's the, already players that even are with Gargur at the moment that are yes. playing for your team as yes. well. So that it is encouraged from the team to be involved in yes. these extra kind of leagues as well how about you Iman how, how have you found uh, has there been any problems or they're not really that bothered about what you're doing in your own time I did address uh, the matter to my coach once and uh, he had told me since we had an important league match coming up that I shouldn't go for um, the FAL league match yep. as he wanted to start me at left back and play me for the full game and he wanted me to be 100% energised but he believes that it's good for me because he believes I can improve yep. like this, playing against adults. Agreed. Even, uh, even so, I'm playing in under-21s now. It's my first year playing in exactly. under-21s. Section B too, so the, the quality is yep. high. So he believes that um, it's good for me and Mohammed to play in FAL because we get good experience from I'm it. glad to hear that because I am very much in favour of players playing as much as possible, especially when... They are getting that exposure of playing. One eight aside is obviously on a much smaller pitch, so the amount of touches that you get throughout the game is obviously a lot more than you would get during an 11 aside match where you can find yourself going 20 minutes without touching the ball because the game just is being played on the other side or the other team has possession of the ball for the entire match. Um, and then obviously playing against adults at your age is, is very beneficial for you just to understand just how much more physical the game can be, faster the game can be, mm -hmm. and just get used to obviously the more kind of tactical side of, of the game. Mm -hmm. I know at the lower levels at least of the academy football here, it's very much not tactical, mm -hmm. just relied on individuals on the day booting the ball forward and, and just whoever makes a mistake and the other team scores usually is how the games are decided. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think I love what you guys are doing. I've been a, a big supporter from day one, tried to help out where I can. And obviously uh, I know I've said one day I'll play a game for you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Still a plan. We'll find out when you guys tell me there's a game coming up that I can play in. Maybe. You're always welcome to play with us. I've Danny, been telling you, tell me, <laughs> tell me when the games are and maybe I'll come. But uh, I think I've got a lot more free time now than I had before. So it's definitely possible in the next kind of few months. Um, if there is a game you want me to play, I'll put on the shirt and battle for the badge. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love it. I think... The next step that you guys need to do is obviously the foul, record the games every now and then. Mm -hmm. I think you guys should take it upon yourselves mm -hmm. to film because that's what's going to grow you online. 
Mm -hmm. And I think you guys should be aiming at trying to go down the YouTube route now as well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've seen... I've done a few projects with posting things online and the views mm -hmm. are usually quite good. And I think there's a gap in the market for a team in Malta to replicate what someone like a, a Five Guys mm -hmm. are doing where you film the games from your perspective and just sit there on the sideline. Gargoyles a small pitch, it's mm -hmm. easy to record. You could just sit there with a little camcorder and uh, obviously the money side of things is the difficult part mm -hmm. and the editing obviously will one of you would need to try and figure out how to do that but if you can i think that's the next step for you guys is mm -hmm. get the games recorded post on social media post on youtube try and build kind of a little following of what you guys mm -hmm. are doing because it's a great idea something that people haven't really been doing over here uh, actually currently uh we already have planned to to uh, make highlights of our matches, post yeah. them on YouTube and uh, show people how we play our football. Of course, not the very disastrous ones because you don't want to give a bad example, even though own it, I though. believe it's... Um, sometimes own it. Sometimes you have to own it. For example, when we lost 17-0 against Legendary, everyone was just blaming everyone. Everyone was unhappy because we lost 17-0. It was a disaster. And... Uh, but yet, some of us embraced the fact that we lost 17-0 and they were like, okay, we lost 17-0, I have to build up on... Exactly, what, motivation to look at things and go, okay, right, what do we need to change? Why were they that much better mm -hmm. than us? What can we adjust from here? I know you've always been interested in the tactical side of things. Mm -hmm. I know you've reached out to me a few times to mm -hmm. try and get a bit of tactical insight mm -hmm. on games and... Unfortunately, eight aside is a mystery to me. I don't really have much <laughs> much input that I can give you on, on that point. I try to not just pretend that I know what I'm talking about and eight aside is one of those things. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. really that adept with playing. I can do it, but when it comes to coaching eight aside, it's a bit of a mystery to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think highlights is definitely the way forward. Mm -hmm. Get highlights of the games. Obviously, if there's any matches that I think there's some on YouTube... We can have maybe one or two games going on in the background mm -hmm. while while we're talking, just so people can see some things. Um, but yeah, I think you guys definitely need to look at growing your social media mm -hmm. presence because especially with young people, mm -hmm. that's how you attract the young mm -hmm. people to come and join, you know? And even us being the youths, social media is very important in today's exactly. uh, the day whole, and age. Exactly, the whole generation of, of like Gen Z, they live on social media mm -hmm. and it kind of typifies what you guys are trying to do if you're making a football team that's based around youth mm -hmm. what's the best way to then hit the youth market is mm -hmm. by putting things online showing people what you're doing i've seen in the past you've done uh lineup graphics you've mm -hmm. done uh match day graphics and stuff build on it be consistent mm -hmm. pick one or two things that are good and mm -hmm. just roll with it and make sure you keep posting mm -hmm. and obviously that comes from someone that's been in the same position as you are trying mm -hmm. to grow things obviously with Gargoyles Academy I managed to build a social media mm -hmm. account from zero to nearly a thousand mm -hmm. followers for a kids football team mm -hmm. like there is interest there you just got to be consistent and keep posting uh -huh. things and and you'll find recruiting players becomes much easier when you've got that kind of social media box mm -hmm. ticked because players at your age if they're not playing for their club, they'd much mm -hmm. rather play for a team that's going to show them off and mm -hmm. give them an opportunity and help them build a profile, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, when it comes to recruitment and uh, online, dealing with online recruitment, uh, it's actually, it's for, if you're good at social media and you know what you're doing, recruitment isn't a big issue. Actually, I still have some friends myself and I know people that are actively telling me to join Aura Nights. But from my end, I don't think they should join because I am a firm believer of you should, uh, if it's not broke, then you shouldn't fix it, yep. you know? And I believe that the team currently is very strong. We have a lot of potential and you just need to build up chemistry. On how we want to exactly. play and build Exactly. Team. I think that's one thing that a lot of teams here in Malta make the mistake. They try and change mm -hmm. out the whole team every year. Keep going, oh, wow, we've got new shiny players. Mm -hmm. Just everyone that we had once before, mm -hmm. just forget them. But you can't do that. Like yeah. You've got to build around a core uh -huh. group, plug a few holes, maybe, okay, we need a winger. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the next year you bring one winger mm -hmm. and keep the team as it is. Mm -hmm. and build with that winger. But it's one of those things I think some people get easily distracted. Mm -hmm. 
Because, for example, uh, the other group, I have to admit, the other group, Eman can admit with me, uh, the other group had way, not way more individual talent than the current group, but they had quite a lot of individual talent. And I believe that the current group, yes, they might not have as much individual talent, but when it comes to us sticking as a team, and even in eight aside, I think it's more important you have that to you stick a as team, a team yeah. than... Teamwork in, in makes the dream work, as yes. they say. And obviously it really is important in small-sided football to yes. be together as a team. Otherwise you will just find yourself uh-huh. fucked up. Yes, that is one of the biggest things. Eman, uh, actually... He, both me and Daman have a lot of experience when it comes to even 11 SI teams in Malta, especially Section A teams. They produce a lot of these youngsters and then they just shove them all into one group. Yeah. And then they end up getting into conflicts with the other players that were in the group before. Uh-huh. And all of them want to play. And then the coach is, he, he ends up getting stuck on who to play. And then a lot of problems come out of nothing, basically. The one thing you don't want in a dressing room is unhappy players. Because yes. one unhappy player you can manage because... Yes. The others are all happy. The mm-hmm. second you get three, four players unhappy, mm-hmm. it's like a cancer that just affects uh-huh. everyone. And suddenly the four players are complaining to five other players. Now you've got nine unhappy players because mm-hmm. suddenly people start agreeing, oh, why isn't he playing? Mm-hmm. Then it becomes a problem. And that's that's one thing, managing a dressing room. You need to keep people happy. Mm-hmm. And it's better to have a smaller, tight-knit group that mm-hmm. understand their roles rather than try and grow too fast too soon and, and be stuck with five or six unhappy mm-hmm. players that aren't getting the game time they want. And that is what I try doing with the new group. I try to get players that would understand their roles and I made it very clear from the beginning that if you're not ready to stick with the team and the team's plans and you want to do your own thing, then get out. I don't want you near the club. I want us to move everything as a team and I don't want, for example, if one player makes a mistake, I don't want him to get blamed. I want the whole team to get blamed Mm -hmm. because when you're on the pitch and you're fighting for your uh, fighting for the win, it's not about who makes it's not about who makes the mistakes on on one player's end. It's about the team, because at the end, at the end of the day, people, unless you play very professional football, Premier League, that type of stuff, people are going to see the post. Yeah. Legendary one against our Knights. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's what they're going to see at the end of the day. So I believe that the whole team should be responsible and not just one player. And that is what I try to instill in the new team. Respect. So we've been talking about kind of the future of the club. Um, next year, obviously, we've touched on where you guys want things to go. But what about... 11 aside, 8 aside, what format are you guys ultimately wanting to play? Are you aiming to stay another season at 8 before moving into 11s or are you happy to stay as an 8 aside team? Like, What's, what's the future for you guys? Um, I think we're going to be playing another season of 8 aside to um, help prepare ourselves for 11 aside. And then hopefully from there, if our club goes, uh, grows further and um, obviously if the players permit, we could um, try to go into 11 aside, maybe. You've got a lot of different options with 11 aside. Obviously, there's Jida, Mafa, Swan, uh, Yask. There's there's a lot of different options. Uh, to be honest, I'm not too familiar with how easy or difficult it is to set up with them, but I can't imagine it's, it's too difficult to register a team. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably wise to play another year of eight. Mm-hmm. Get your team together, keep the players that obviously have been playing well and united and then obviously you can start plugging a few more players in and then before you know it you've got a solid team of 16 players that can show up each week rather than trying to struggle to put together an 11 aside team each week and, and losing players through people just feeling like others aren't committed mm-hmm. enough so I think that's probably a good move uh, so you're going to stick with I think Gargoyle's the only eight aside league yeah. right yeah. so another year with Gargoyle's league and then potentially moving into 11 aside I think is is a good idea for you guys is there anything that you want to say I think we're going to start to wind the podcast down now if there's if there's anything you want to say before we start I'll, I'll start closing off in a second nothing much just a big up to our squad our current squad um yeah, they're hardworking people. They um, they don't flame each other in any way. 
they're supportive of each other and uh, they're motivated. Mm -hmm. From my end, what I can say is uh, to those people that want to start a club, whatever age you are, uh, don't give up. And not just in football, in life, whatever you want to do, you should try to do it, aim high, and eventually you'll get there. If you want to start a club, of course, Malta isn't one of the hardest countries to start. But of course, before you start the club, make sure you have adequate funding. And the most important of all, you have those players that are willing to put their 200% into every match. That is the most important thing when it comes to playing. But remember, uh, don't give up. And uh, if you want to start a team, get those people. And uh, yes, I'm sure you will thrive. Yeah, I think I think they're very good points to make. Uh, I think a lot of people always have that kind of dream of wanting to start a football club, but never really know where to start. Mm -hmm. But I think as you've shown, Iman, it's just a case of waking up, putting together a team and, and get your mates together and, and play and see what happens. You just keep chipping away. Obviously, once you start playing together, it becomes a lot easier from there to just keep the momentum going. But unless you actually try and do it, it just never happens. It always stays an idea. So uh, credit to you for starting. Credit to you, businessman Zim, for <laughs> making the purchase of the club. I think that's a, a wise investment of 50 cents. Uh, I'm sure Eman's happy that he made a profit from the club. I've already got uh, I've already got an offer for more than 50 cents. So oh, okay, from my end, it is more than a 500% Mr. Bigger. Monopoly, Mr. Monopoly. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm not going to sell the club for now, for sure. I have the, the next season and maybe the one after, I'm not going to get rid of the club for sure. I'm very happy with the purchase I made. Who knows, maybe in two years' time we see uh, Zim selling the club and turning himself into a million air from 50 cents but uh no guys it's been great having you guys on uh i think we're going to start signing out here so this has been episode 14 of the unprofessional footballer podcast if you would like to follow our knights's journey they can find you on instagram mm -hmm. what is the instagram account name uh it's literally just our fc is there any underscores or anything like that? No, nothing. Perfect. Easy to find. Uh, the page will be behind us as well. I'll put a, a picture up of the page. So if you want to follow what they're doing, you can go there. Um, there's no other social media accounts, right? Not really. Facebook page, anything like that? We had a Facebook, but we kind of neglected it. You should keep up the Facebook page, especially in Malta. Mm -hmm. I think the older generation lives through Facebook here. Mm -hmm. Much to my dismay, I hate <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Literally, I had to make a Facebook basically just when I came here because I figured out that the whole football industry runs through it. Mm -hmm. You negotiate your contracts through Facebook. You <laughs> find trials through Facebook. Uh, just, it, just the most unprofessional environment ever, but it made me laugh. So I've learned the, the wise ways of using Facebook here. Uh, so, yeah, I would recommend joining Facebook even for searching friendlies mm -hmm. and stuff. You guys know how the deal works. You join the five and eight aside groups and you can arrange fixtures and stuff through Facebook. Um, so, yeah, recommend making a Facebook page. Uh, YouTube, I think, is your next step for sure. Get some highlights online, mm -hmm. show some stuff, get people interested in what you're doing. Um, but yeah, apart from that, guys, if you've liked the episode, uh, feel free to put a comment down below. Let us know who you'd like to see on the podcast next. Share the content with your friends and make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you want more unprofessional footballer content. Check out the Five Aside series that's running at the moment. Uh, that'll also be put in the background. And uh, yeah, Zim, it's been a pleasure. Hey man, you, pleasure. See you later, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.